Marcus Wachtel is 13 years old when he disappears without a trace in 1998. Only a few days later, his body is found. The boy was executed in the most unthinkable way and chopped into six pieces afterwards. Who is capable of such a heinous act? The police zeroes in on one person pretty quickly, but is the solution to this case really so simple? A question that is still on a lot of people's mind these days. In today's video, we are talking about Marcus Wachtel's murder and about the several year long search for justice that followed it. His life and the disappearance. Marcus grew up with his parents Michaela and Hartmut Wachtel in the German province Thuringia. In 1992, the small family decided to leave their home and move to Pine in Low Saxony. In the small town of Sederdorf, they put down their roots and bought a house. The three of them lived a simple life, but were very happy doing so. Marcus was always such a kind and funny kid. He went to a special school for children with behavioral problems, where he would get into arguments with other students from time to time. However, none of them were so serious or concerning that they would go beyond regular disagreements with other teenagers. It was March 7th, 1998, when Marcus' parents decided to go out on Saturday night for the first time in six years. Marcus was now 13 years old and they trusted their son that he would be okay with spending the night at home alone. Michaela and Hartmut were invited to a friend's pajama party. They also wanted to spend the night there afterwards. Marcus laughed at his parents, who put on their pajamas in the evening and left the house dressed like that. They had bought him chips and cokes and had told him that he was allowed to stay up late and watch movies. When Michaela and Hartmut said goodbye that evening, Marcus called after them laughing, but I'm not going to bed yet. But neither of his parents were aware that this would be the last time that they would see their son and that Marcus Wachtel would never ever spend another night in his bed again. When Marcus' parents came home the next morning, the home was empty and deserted. It didn't look like Marcus had slept in his bed. Mikhail and Hartmut were worried. They asked all of Marcus' friends if they had seen him or if he was still with them. This is how they found out that the prior evening, Marcus had gone to an acquaintance's house the next door to borrow a video game. After that, it doesn't seem that Marcus ever came home. This is when Marcus' parents decided to call the police. The search and the investigation. At first, any police efforts to find Marcus were unsuccessful. They didn't find any trace of Marcus and also could not get any leads from possible witnesses. But then, on March 10th, 1998, about three days after Marcus' disappearance, his remains were found by a pond that was only about 900 meters away from his parents' house. At the edge of the pond, they located Marcus' torso. At that time, they were unable to find his head and limbs at first. After divers were sent out to search the lake, it wasn't long before they were able to locate the missing body parts. This confirmed what everyone had already assumed after the horrific find of the torso. The body belonged to Marcus Wachtel. And not only that, he had clearly been murdered. The remains were immediately turned over to the forensic department and only two days later the results of the autopsy were on the table. Marcus had been strangled and then dismembered with a saw. In addition, with the help of a complex investigative process, foreign skin particles were found on Marcus' body. The police spent the next few months comparing the DNA of 2,100 residents of Stedardorf to the sample, without success. The investigation seemed hopeless, but in July 1999, more than one year later, the police questioned members of the public again, and surprisingly, they were led to the only suspect in the Marcus Wachtel case. Alexander Brock
They were given the name Alexander Brock, a son of a refugee family from Kazakhstan. At that time, Alexander was 16 years old and attended vocational school. He knew Marcus. The two boys had argued a few times in the past. On September 22, 1999, an arrest warrant was issued for Alexander Brock. The many interrogations and interviews have never been released. It is not clear why Alexander was under such urgent suspicion and what proved his guilt. One thing that is known is that Marcus and Alexander were apparently arguing over a cigarette, which led Alexander to strangle the 13 year old while being completely enraged. The police and the judge were probably encoached in this assumption by Alexander's violent past. He already had several convictions under his belt, which included assault. He also said during interrogation, I'm sorry, I didn't mean him to be dead, which investigators saw as an admission of guilt. On October 16, 1999, which was Marcus' father's birthday, the grave of the 13-year-old was defiled. Someone dug up the grave and carefully and very professionally opened up the coffin and stole the dead boy's head. That struck investigators as very strange. During that time, Alexander Brock was already in custody. Who besides the killer had an interest to taunt Marcus' parents like this and steal their dead child's head? Due to the professional manner in which the deed was committed, the police assumed that that crime was carried out by more than one person. They did not believe in a random act connected to necrophilia. Marcus' parents were scared to leave their house for weeks after that, out of fear that they would encounter their son's head on the floor outside of their door. Marcus' severed head never showed up again until today. The Verdict On May 17, 2000, the trial against Alexander Brook began away from the public eye. Almost a year later, on April 30, 2001, the verdict was in. Alexander's lawyers had pleaded for acquittal, but they lost. Alexander was found guilty of causing bodily harm resulting in death and was sentenced to six years in juvenile justice system. Alexander was still denying that he had anything to do with Marcus' death. His lawyers went into revision, but the court said that there was no reasonable doubt that the defendant was guilty, so the verdict stood. This result was not particularly satisfactory for Michaela and Hartmut either, because they too had to admit that it was not clear if Alexander was their son's killer. In addition to the grave robbery, there were other indications that it was not just a matter of one killer. There was proof that Marcus' body was dismembered some time after his death and placed in the gravel pond. That would have been very difficult for one single person to accomplish, meaning transporting the remains through the downtown area of the city, past the police officers who were looking for Marcus. Today Marcus' parents were no longer able to live peacefully in Stederdorf. Everything reminded them of their son and his gruesome murder. They were also tormented by the possibility that their son's killer was still out there. When they couldn't stand it anymore, they decided to move. Today they are living a bit outside of the city, in a more remote part. It is way more quiet out here, very peaceful. There are too many kids where we used to live, they both said. They could not endure watching Marcus' friends grow up. By building a new house, they tried to distract themselves, to no avail. Now we build this nice home, Michaela Wachtel said. You do it because you have to make yourself keep going, Hartmut adds. But they kept all of Marcus' belongings. They are storing them neatly wrapped up in the attic. Throwing them out was not an option. We have a lifelong sentence, is their comment about it. What they mean is, that they will never be able to have a normal life again, ever. But even Alexander Brook has since publicly spoken out. He has become a father himself in the meantime and still maintains his innocence, even 20 years after Marcus' death. 
In an interview he said, I did not kill Marcus Wachtel. I am innocent. I never confessed something I didn't do. The police believed witnesses that were proven to be lying. Also, a lot of facts were disregarded. Facts that could have exonerated me. Regarding the supposed motive, in argument over cigarette, he says, That is just as stupid that it is untrue. The last thing he adds is, I feel terrible for Marcus' parents. I have two children of my own now. He also points out parallels to the murder of Tristan Brübach. And indeed, if you look closely, you will find quite a few. Tristan Brüber from Frankfurt was also murdered in the same month as Marcus. His body was also dismembered after the crime. Both boys were 13 years old when they died. And what is particularly disturbing, a week before Marcus' grave was desecrated and his head removed, the same was attempted with Tristan's grave too. The coffin was uncovered in an almost professional manner. However, they were not able to open it because the perpetrators were probably disturbed and fled. Both crimes are unsolved until this day. You can only assume that we are dealing with the same suspects here. And this brings us to the end of today's video. What do you think about this mysterious case? Is a 16-year-old vocational school student capable of committing such a heinous act? Or did the actual killer get away? And what makes someone dig up a child's grave and remove the head? Was that supposed to be some kind of trophy? If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment. Thank you in advance and I appreciate you for watching. We will see each other for the next video. Good night and see you soon.